Afternoon Talk on SAFM. Right, the man in the spotlight today is uh, Sonwabile Indamazi. Yesterday, we had uh, Chad Leclo. Let me just remind you that uh, the podcast of that interview should be up around 4 o'clock today, somewhere there on the safm.co.za website. You can also go to YouTube and then search for SAFM and you'll find it once again there. So sometime, uh, and there's also pictures. There's pictures on my Facebook page. There are pictures on Twitter and the same with SAFM Radio about his visit together with his coach, Graham Hill. We had a great time talking to him. On uh, on Wednesday, we'll have uh, the other South African gold medalist, and uh, that is uh, Cameron van der Berg in the spotlight. And then in between the weekend, the the rowers also won gold. Will be uh, well, guess in on the Saturday sports special. So don't miss out for that one. Don't miss that one at all. Right. Oh eight nine one one zero four two zero seven. So Mabila Indamize is uh, is my guest. He's the man who's a designer. But uh, you, you do know. Uh, first of all, good, great of you to come in. You do know that wherever you go, you've been called the man who designed the Madiba shirt. It is a fact. So, is that a good thing now, like 20 years later? Well, what I'm asking is, like, if, you, if you're in a soapy and you've done well, then you want to be known in that soapy, but 20 years later, you're still known for the same thing. Isn't it the case of, not come on, move on, or because it's Madiba, you want to be a part of it, no matter what? Well, as, as long as he's still alive. <laughs> Indeed, well, he yes, is. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, anyway, um, it is one of those fascinating things that... Uh, you know, you do something for an icon person, so it will always stick with you all the time. So that's exactly what happened, therefore, to me as well. Okay, now you do have a fascinating career because we're going to talk about design and fashion and entrepreneurship once again, and of course, the Madiba shirts, all of that. Uh, so if you want to call in 0891 104207, SMS is 3471. You can also tweet me to uh, Ashraf Garda1, and if you're do, doing that, use the hashtag. Uh, afternoon talk and you can also comment via facebook as well so how much do you know about the man who designed the madiba shirt how much do you know about son wabile or i should say as well what's the one question you've always wanted to ask that person well here's your chance to do just that you can do it right away son wabile in the Masi, the man in the in the spotlight so your your what are you doing now i mean you're, you're still involved in design you've been around someone said outside you've been around forever what what are you uh, and you're not 80 years old i know that but i mean what, what are you doing now no no i'm still actually in the fashion industry once again it is one of the spotlight that i have been finding it fascinating mm-hmm. and keeping me as young as I am. Okay. Um, well, you look young. Yeah. Thank you very much. You look much. about 21, actually. But My so, goodness. We just got finger licking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. Okay, so you're still in fashion. I'm still in fashion, but now what happened is one is that people who don't understand, you can be involved when you are in fashion. Mm-hmm. It is a creative art. It's one of those artistic moments that you cannot get any day which is dull. And uh, sleeping hours as well are very fascinating. And also you must understand that when you are a fashion designer, there's quite a number of things that you can do. You can become a consultant. And then also you can become one of the people that actually lecture in some of the institution Mm -hmm. and also mentoring. So apart from just only being a creative person sitting into the studio, once now you've gained the momentum in the space so there are quite a number of opportunity that you ended up doing out there in the market space okay, actually so, so there's the sky becomes your oyster so so which one are you are you the the one who's now lecturing and consulting or the one who's chasing after the miss south africa because you want to design her outfit no 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 no. i leave that one for the young and upcoming <laughs> it's no more now chasing people are chasing me now. oh they are chasing it's the other way around yes right. yes because they want durable clothing they know that at the end of the day, I've done mistakes and I've learned from them. And therefore now they're looking for quality and they're looking for sustainability from me. I thought so, you said you've done mistakes, but you, you mean they've made the mistakes? No, no. I have as well done. I've, I've learned from my mistakes that okay. I have done within the industry. I know the do's and don'ts. So therefore, if you want your product at a particular time, you are definitely to get it and you will get it finite or nice tight and clean it's not going to be a situation that you'll find it with the threads running up there and there and mm-hmm. therefore you've got pins here and there and so forth are you saying all that, that many things. designers do that you buy a uh, a designer garment and you get pins uh, stuck into the clothing 
Definitely, they still do that. <laughs> Even actually in the fashion shows that I usually do, you find that every time and again, they don't meet up what we call the deadline. They always have got excuses why they did not meet that deadline and the person still running about was he or she knows that he was supposed or she was supposed have done you know, the work out there. And uh, he is the one or she's the one who have agreed in telling the client that you will get your thing at a particular time. And then the next moment, she is ducking or he's ducking and diving and coming what, up with many excuses. Are you saying the industry is bad? The industry on its own, it's, um, it's a cutthroat industry. It is not an industry that is a smooth running, you know, uh, or a smooth sailing mm -hmm. because quite a number of designers, they come in, and then they disappear within a wing of an eye. A reason is that, um, you know, clients sometimes can be very finick, uh, they can be very difficult, and others actually designers as well, they think that the industry is about the, you know, being yourself, and then the prima donna, and being on the ramp. <laughs> they forget the business side of the industry that being in the fashion industry that's a business and it's a huge business you need them to respect indeed okay let, let's talk about the business of of uh, nelson mandela of madiba and the madiba shirt so you designed the shirt i there was no madiba shirt before sonobile came along no no there was the, 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 actually the, no 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 you must understand that they it's been coined around the men Fair enough. Yeah, and I say what I'm trying to say. It's been coined around the men, but other than that, the shirt was long been around. And is that is that your style? My style has long been around. Actually, one of the people, which is funny enough, I do not know whether it was coincidentally that uh, because I used to design for the Mandela family, mm, especially mm. the Zinzi and Mama Winnie and okay. so forth. Mm -hmm. I used to walk around with Zinzi and then there was a time whereby I came up, you remember when I used to come into your shop yes, as well yes, and yeah. buy mm, fabrics mm, in the mm. 80s. And then at that time, you'll find that there was also the, the so-called then, the Chinese jackets, mm. which is the Mandarin collar kind of mm. jackets. Or the narrow style. The well. narrow yes. style, yes. Mm. So now I used to do that and using African aesthetics or African fabrics and silhouettes, you know, around it. And guess what was happening then? And I remember vividly clear that when this is said, why don't you patent even this kind of jackets then? <laughs> that was in the 90s then, you know. And because the way the people, um, they were dressing them so well, and it was coming out so well to them. And that was when then, immediately I was also introduced to the family, you know, the Mandela family. And that's when then I so came... So you obviously knew them when Nelson Mandela was still in prison. I knew, well, yes, was, 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 was still you knew in the prison. family. I knew that, right? yeah, that's yeah. right, yes. And when then he was released, that was the time then I started to be called, I was called in. And I remember even at the wedding of uh, Zinzi, mm -hmm. when she was mm -hmm. getting married, she also consulted with me. And then I introduced uh, the other designer, which was called Duval then. Yes, because yes. I've launched quite a number of other designers in the space. I have been this kind of a designer that has been very selfish in terms of the space that I do occupy. Mm -hmm. Because I always believe that the more the merrier. And also for me, it was also to find out that the African aesthetics was not there and no one was utilizing that mm. kind of a space. So, so would it be fair to say that, uh, that yourself, uh, one of the first of the emerging black designers that were part who emerged in the old South Africa, but effectively then came at the right time in the new South Africa where they're embracing a whole new fashion. What I'm saying is, Prior to 1990, the you know you say designers, you say you know Chris Levine, and you say Peter Soldatus, that's and, right, and yes. Greta Abrams. I mean, those were the names, but that's and that, right. that was it. There was no black designers. That's and a fact. Usually, emerged just at the right time as the transition of the country happened. That you were there as well. I was there as well, and all those people that were mentioning, I've worked with them. Mm -hmm. Those were the gurus. Did you, then. right? Oh okay. yes, of course. Yes. Peter Soldatus <laughs> and Chris Levine and so forth. I've got even pictures in my studio because those were the people that then. They were not selfish 
in terms of the space that they were utilizing. Mm -hmm. I remember very well as well, because immediately when I get into the space, I used to consult with them as well. Trying because as well, I was uh, it was my first time coming as well in Johannesburg because I came in Johannesburg in 1984, you know, coming from the Eastern Cape that is in the trans guy then, mm -hmm. you know, and it is within that kind of people who are not selfish, but to me, also, it was a sense of that why every time and again, all the designers that come out of the institution of learning they always disappear. You don't see them establishing mm -hmm. themselves. And the magazines then, whenever you look at the magazine, the only designers that you will see were your so-called light-skinned designers, to be mm, politically mm, correct. Mm, mm. And therefore, it was a hard knock to crack. It is then, that time in 1993, then I started to take young and upcoming designers and then I launched the Vukani Fashion Awards at that time. And I managed to put together the ANC and the SAC, I mean SACP and mm -hmm. also the PAC. And then I've got letters that when in 1993, I said to them, they need to embrace the African aesthetics. And in 1994, in March, I took actually the designers with me. We had to go and exhibit for the first time in Atlanta, mm -hmm. in the USA. And therefore, we were also given the proclamation of the city of Atlanta. It was called 13th of March is Vukani Day oh, in really? Atlanta. Yeah. Okay, fascinating story. You know? I wonder if, you, if you're if fascinated by listening to uh, Sonwabile in the Masi, because he's done lots of things. He's the executive president of the South African Fashion Designers Association, which is called SAFTA, involved in other fields of uh, entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship as well. But also, he, he will, and this will always stay with him, is the man who, who designed what is now known as the, uh, the Madiba shirt and uh, gained a great reputation from doing just that. What are your thoughts about that? If you want to, if you want to call in, that's great, 0891-104-207. Now, if you know Son Mabile personally, and we're sort of putting out a challenge, so does anybody, <laughs> do you know him personally uh, enough to want to say hi to him and not to say, well, I wish I told him, but I won't. So... If you do know him and you know what he was like before and what he is now, and he's, he's probably going younger now uh, as he's growing older, <laughs> uh, that's great as well. If you've actually bought any of his outfits, that's fantastic. If you've been inspired by the Madiba shirt or, in fact, maybe not inspired by the Madiba shirt, you think, well, yes, I just don't like it, that's also fantastic for you to call him. Uh, somebody actually is saying, uh, and I'll probably pick out those tweets just now. Uh, no, there's, a, there's some Facebook comments that I want to read up um, in a moment. Okay, before I get to those Facebook comments, what what are your thoughts? So you're saying you had this, this shirt that you were already designing, mm -hmm. right? And it just, I mean, a couple of things happened. You you befriended the, the Mandela family. Mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela was still in prison. He mm -hmm. gets released. Mm -hmm. The family obviously gets, gets even bigger prominence, naturally. So right. he becomes the new president uh, or soon to be the president. And, and he wears your shirts. Now, now, who suggested that he must wear your shirts? Um, there was no one who suggested, but I was introduced to the family mm -hmm. at that time. Um, like I so say, to when Mandiba was uh, released, then mm -hmm. I started to be called to come and meet him as well. Was well. Then he started to ask and say, um, when I was introduced to say, <laughs> this, this, he's a designer. And then he started by saying, oh, <laughs> Who are you? And I said, I'm Sonabil and I said, hey, Pondo, you are now coming from Transkai. You're saying you are a designer. Let me see, what can you do for me? And then I started to give him and show, and then I said, okay, fine. I will bring him something that I'm doing. And then I brought him quite a number of things. And then among those, there were shirts, there were jackets, like I say, your Mandarin suit kind mm, of. Mm, and mm. then he just only said, I don't like, you know, suits and things, suits and things mm, like mm. that. Uh, but I want something that I could feel more comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And also there's something that, um, you know, was happening then is that, uh, you know, he he was still not that much very well. Mm -hmm. Because you must understand that whilst they were there, um, his body temperature was also playing a role. That's why then you could not see him all the time with the suits. Oh, is that a factor? That's because a, obviously yes. the whole move now from prison to prison to, to outside. You know, yeah. Yes, yeah. and therefore you know they were working through the alkaline and whatever you 
you know, during that era in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Robben Island. So therefore, he wanted something that is going to be cool into his body mm -hmm. for health purposes. And therefore, uh, I started, therefore, to speak to the company that I was working with as well, which was very close, uh, which I launched as well at that time, Vlisco Fabrics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then by that time, when I launched them, as an African aesthetics, and then I brought him some of the fabrics, and then he started to pick up some of the fabrics that he liked, and then I did some few shirts for him, and then the rest was history because he loved them. <laughs> to now, bits. now, I mean, when we think of a president or a prime minister, it's exactly like you suggested. It's conservative suits, a white shirt, you know, maybe a red tie if it's a power tie for an occasion. Otherwise, it's dull and pretty boring. And so here comes this man from prison and decides, well, I want to wear a shirt uh, that is hanging out, right, sort of uh, over the waist. And, and it must be stylish. It must have a pattern. It can't be dull and boring. Uh, who, didn't anybody else say that you may like it, but it's not good enough for the president? Well, the fortunate or unfortunate thing is that the critics as well was at home. <laughs> Mama Winnie as well. Yeah, yeah. She keep on teasing me by saying, Hey, Wena, why are you dressing? Hey, you. When say, hey, Wena. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you. Why are you dressing my men with cotton fabrics? <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> indeed it is. It's all very floral. Right? <laughs> the floral part of yeah. it. And then, and then I started to say, oh, mama, how could you say that? If so it was just only a comment we'll throw around. Okay. And uh, like I so say, you know, you always get this kind of comments coming in. And But at the end of the day, because it was something new, mm. you must understand, it was an eye shocker, you know. You, because Indeed were, it was. Yes, yeah. because you were prickling the eye at that point in time. Mm. Mm. No one was anticipating or expecting something of that nature. So therefore, anybody should have been shocked. And that's why then, first and foremost, we are shocked by this man coming out of prison at that time. And therefore, he also needed, therefore, to have this identity, which then... And you remember, I mean, even uh, Archbishop to do that. Mm, mm, he, mm. Everybody come out to comment about it. And also knowing that uh, and even himself, he had got the way of answering all these people. Okay, we're going to find out what, what answers he gave <laughs> when they asked him that. Oh, it's 9110407. We are chatting to Sonwa Bile in, Dami, in Damasi. And as you've heard, he's the man who who designed the what is known now as the Madiba shirt. Uh, let's get to the callers. Uh, you need to get your headphones on, right? Uh, Bikisha in uh, in Cape Town. Hi. Uh, I, I, I want to personally, you know, commend you for your strides and progression in life. Thank you. Yes, but uh, the question here to you, you know, is, is based on the fact that, uh, you know, I believe that you, you come from one of the poorest provinces. If I'm right, if I'm wrong, you'll correct me, Eastern Cape. Am I right or wrong? You're right, yes. Thank you. You know, but, but you know, the question is, uh, how much have you done or how much are you doing presently to try, you know, and, and blow back, you know, in a way, try and, and, and assist, you know, that, that, that area, perhaps, uh, you know, and to be particular, your own area. What are you really doing there, you know? I, okay, I ask that's... this question, you know, because the tendency sometimes with uh, some of us who happen to be lucky, you know, to progress in life, we forget, you know, where, where we come from, you know. So how much All right, let, let's get a response. Thank Bikicha, you. thanks so much for that. Uh, let's, get a, let's get a response. Thank you for that. Okay, what are you, what are you putting back? Funny enough, uh, actually, uh, uh, tomorrow I'm going again to Eastern Cape. I have been going to Eastern Cape quite co uh, often. Mm -hmm. And then there is a project that uh, I have adopted, mm -hmm. which is called actually September Women's Co-ops. Right. It's one of the emerging co-ops, which is based uh, in the Pondo region where I come from. And um, last month, I spent almost seven days of my time in terms of actually assisting them and also in seeing their production that is going well. In summer, that one of the jobs that I always uh, outsource 
some of my work that I get on an international basis and also on local basis, mm-hmm. if ever then is two volumes, much volumes, then I always talk to them to say, please work with me because those are the people that I believe it's a community project um, that is based in Transkai, which is the then Transkai, but now at this point in time in the Pondo region. And I'm assisting them by virtue of giving them much of the work and also mentoring them. Uh, even now, like I also say, tomorrow, I will be going to the Eastern Cape and one of them. And you're doing just that. I also want to talk about to something you're about. doing in Botswana. We'll do that in a, in a, in a, in a second. Uh, let's just get to, I, th- I think it's Meve, right? I hope I've got that right from Durban. Hi. Hello. Yes, yes hi, Meve. Hi, thank you very much. I just wanted to say well done to the designer. I can't say his name. Zomobile, um, yes. He had the God-given talent and he used it and he pushed through and he was at the right place at the right time and he wasn't afraid and he was bold and it's an example for everybody out there to just follow your dreams. Well done. Thank you very much. All right, that's very nice. Thanks, yes, thanks for that thank uh, call. Now, there's a, a series of SMSs or other Facebook comments I want to read. Um, Lulu saying, uh, what inspired that design? It's quite unique. And who else besides Madiba wears them a lot? So, okay, that's an interesting one. Who else besides Madiba wears it? Oh, there are quite a number of people. I mean, I've designed for... Helen Zilla, does she? I'm just checking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, there's quite a number of people actually whom I've designed for, but uh, you know it won't be nicer to because those are the clients. Okay. So I won't because um, it's it's not it's not good. That's a ethics. confidentiality. Yes, thing. because when a people actually you know buy from you, it's like Edgar's. If ever then I go to the Edgar's and buy some of my stuff, therefore, uh, if I bought it, I'm not supposed to expose it unless somebody took my things on consignment just only to go out of bed. You can see my label is all over the show. And the label is called? Vukani. Vukani. Yes. Stay, wake up or stand wake up. up. Wake yeah, up. Wake up, right. Vukani. So I don't give out the names of my client because I don't use them as right. my marketing gimmicks. Here's an interesting one. Uh, Lechla Honolo saying, uh, making money out of Tata yet again. Maybe I should also write a book about Mandela. And you join in. Isn't that what 46664 is about? <laughs> a way to enrich yourselves through an old man's good deed. So uh, it's, big, it's critical of you making money out of Mandela. Actually, I'm not making money out of Mandela. Mandela, actually, I only made the clothes. And then Mandela actually wears them. But it's a situation, like I was saying, that quite a number of people usually ask, who dresses Madiba? Where do this, I mean, this mm, kind mm, of mm. shirts come from? And then that's when then my name came into the fore. Because you're stating a fact. You did design for That's you. right, yes. Dress. That's all. all so right. anybody else, if ever then somebody else can come in as well and say so and so, like I say, there's quite a number of prominent people. I mean, I've designed even for Prince. I mean, uh, Lesotho, I've done things for the king of Lesotho. I've done things out of this, I mean, quite a number of other places. Like I also say, it's just that I don't want to be a n- name okay. dropper. I, w- I want to ask you who you want to design <laughs> for and who has said no. And, you, and you're and begging that person to say, please wear my Madiba styled shirts. We are chatting to Sonwa Bile. In the Mazi, who was a fashion designer, and his label is uh, Vukani, but uh, famously known for the man who who designed that shirt that came to be then known after the event. By the way, let's get that clear as the Madiba shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, your thoughts: oh eight nine one one zero four two zero seven. As we put him in the spotlight, uh, SMSs three four seven zero one. I'll also read the tweets, and there's some um, Facebook comments. I'll check out in uh, just a second. Right, so Mobile in Damazi is my guest, is the man in the spotlight up to about quarter to four before we get to uh, to Radio VUCA. Just by the way, we were speaking about it earlier on about uh, being uh, entrepreneurial as well. Other SMSs, rather Facebook comments, Emmanuel saying, does he wear the same shirts and how much did Madiba pay? Was it cash or credit? Now, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> Do you wear the same shirts? Let's well, start with the easy question. <laughs> well, all of them are very easy. Well, fortunately, actually, I, I, I wear different kinds of design that mm-hmm. I make, like mm-hmm. the one that I'm wearing now today. 
All right. And we'll uh, describe that in a second. <laughs> I need to get, by the way, I need to get the guys to take some photos so we can stick a photograph of some mobilia on my Facebook and Twitter page. It is looking absolutely flashy today, by the way. Okay, carry on. So that, that being that, I have quite a number of shirts that I do have in my wardrobe as mm-hmm. well. Uh, which I adore them. Uh, I should think as well, they've got quite a number of sentiments on them Mm -hmm. because of the old man and also actually me having this kind of a signature that I've managed to put out there. So you wear it, right? Now, what do you you charge? Did you charge him? Well, funny enough, the, the first items that I did, I was like, a, a, you know, a child in the candy shop. Yes, yes. yes. So I couldn't even mention <laughs> rents. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first. Yeah. But funny enough, there's only one item mm-hmm. that I charged him. Mm-hmm. But that item was bought through the foundation. Okay. You know, and then when it was bought through the foundation, then I started to charge them, and then I charged them even for the. For the others that I've okay. given they them, can pay them yeah. so that but, they can. But the others you did, right. Yes. And then, okay, so was it cash or credit? We got the answer <laughs> to that one there. Uh, it was a check, actually. Jasmine uh, Moroleng saying, what inspired him to design that shirt? So, and maybe you could just answer this one. Did he convince the statesman to wear casual from suits, as most of the presidents does? Uh, what is Mandela's fashion taste? Okay, so I mean that's similar to what we were talking about earlier on. Maybe you can right, just yeah. answer all those there. But that's what we did it before we got for the news. So, I mean, here he was the he was sort of breaking a trend, being very very casual. In many ways, it got him in touch, not just with his clothing, but it connected with the masses as well. So, look at this guy. Here's a guy who's got a jive, and um, he's very casual and very stylish, and completely different from the old nationalist government leaders that we were used to, or any other leader we've seen. You know, before and since, and he said he stepped his mark. Mm-hmm. So, besides, you mentioned Winnie Mandela, who asked you, "What were you doing?" Right? Um, what, what was was Madiba comfortable wearing that sort of shirt? Madiba was very much comfortable. To prove that it was, he was very much comfortable. For example, in 1996, when he had to go to London mm-hmm. and meet the Queen, I was one of his entourage okay. as well. Right? You know. And then when we were there, I mean, dining in that hotel, mm, mm, mm. which is uh, Dorchester Hotel. Right. One of the things that he did, wearing the shirt with that kind of a pride and saying cheers without the jacket, which is the British way of doing things. <laughs> and it was awesome to me. Guess what happened as well to me then when I was going there? In that, because I was right at the back when I was coming in, because of the kind of a jacket that I was wearing as well, which was very um, ethic in terms of the the design that I did. Mm, mm. The guy at the door, he stopped me. And then to say, hey, you are not wearing a suit. Who are you? Mm. Because he was also expecting me. Yes, of course. And then funny enough, I do not know who else that jumped because I was saying that because we were checking the names and mm. he found my mm. name is there. Mm. Then he looked at me, look at the way I dressed because it was who's who, the creme de la cra of mm. London mm. and South Africa, your Sir Ramaposas of this world, your ambassadors. Your, you name them that were there okay. inside. Mm. Now, when I when this guy stopped me, which was one of the things that always stick with me to say, really, clothing sometimes can shock other people because they are in a position of understanding who, what kind of people that has to be dressing in a particular. Then and another woman, I don't even know, even I don't know, even her today. She charmed and said, "That's an artist. That's Mandela's uh, designer." Designer, and yeah. then. She even by saying, he says, that's Mandela's designer. Let him in. Please don't ask any question. <laughs> then I started finding myself freezing, you know, at the door. Like, okay, who's this one now? Then I was executed. I mean, I was just only taken okay. straight, uh, you know, to the to where I was sitting. Fascinating. All right. You know? Anybody else still knows Son Wabile in the Mazi personally? Uh, and you want to say hi to him or you want to ask him a question about design and fashion uh, even now and how to well how to how to design for a president because that's something that nobody else can 
probably tell you about in this country. 0891104207. Uh, there are some SMSs I'll read. Uh, I see Riyaz Siddiqui saying very interesting. Uh, and there's a couple others as well. I'll read them in just a second. Uh, the Kernsey College Choir wears a Madiba shirt for some of the songs they sing. That comes from Lauren. Mr. Sonabile, keep up the good work. May God bless you. That comes from Reverend B. A. Dlamini, Mount Fletcher. You know the Reverend? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the Reverend certainly thinks that you're on a wing and a prayer. Yeah. The other one saying this is a joke. The design originated from West Africa. Most of the shirts originated from Indonesia. That comes from Henry in Cape Town. Um, okay. You want to you want to answer that one there? No, no. The um, what is Indonesian? Is the geometrics what you see on the fabric the pattern, right? The here. pattern that mm. you you found within the fabric. It's not the, like the design they come from mm. Indonesia. But now, what has happened is that because the fabric is a fabric that you can get it anywhere, and like he's like he's rightfully says, those are Indonesian patterns that you find within those um, those shirts. At the end of the day, it doesn't make them to be that extremely unique because when you go to Indonesia you'll find everybody wears the same thing Every, yeah, but, yeah. yeah so I mean you could make that out of because this was a this was a shirt not a jacket that we're talking about yes that's, that's what makes it unique yeah that's right yes. well how how did you I want to get to some of the other callers but very quickly how, how did you the Madiba Association how did that help your career uh, it has helped me a lot I must say he has also managed to introduce me to quite a number of you know, avenue. For example, when I launched Vukani in whilst he was still the president, um, then he also sent his um, his encouragement to the designers um, in uh, to, to to encourage them by virtue that um, I must also give back to the community. Okay. The yeah. other way of giving back into the community is by virtue of this annual Vukani Fashion Awards that I always do, where I award the designers that are up and coming that needs the platform, that cannot get those kind of platform. Mm -hmm. Your other fashion weeks that actually are giving. But for them that are starting then to have their new portfolios, these are some of the people that actually I assist them with. Okay, I'll get to um, Antoinette in, in Cape Town. Let's get to you first. Hi, Antoinette. Antoinette, hi. Hello. Uh, hello. Sh yes, hi. You're on the air. Antoinette, hi. Is it, is, it, is it me, Antoinette? Yes, you, you're, you're live okay. on SAFM, yes. Uh, uh, I am a granny, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. granny of 92. Mm -hmm. And I had the privilege of my diva that I fell in love with him with a shirt he was wearing 15 years ago at the opening of our church. As he came in on that red carpet, oh, I saw humility in that man, but the shirt. And you know, I really fell in love with him. And when we, he came up to the front, they said all of us will shake hands with him at the sides of the benches, but tea time, we're all going to meet him. And I was on the end, my daughter had me right in front. And uh, when it came to my my turn, I took his hand and I thought, oh, what can I send him to make me feel that I'm, I'm falling in, falling in <laughs> love with the shirt. I said, Kamali Kayasu Christu Mali Bongwai, come let's pray together to God. And he said to me, Granny, very, very good. Go and sing it to the community. But I wish you'll see the photo he's got me around my back. And well, I've you should send us the, the pictures. Back. And our two grey hairs. Why don't you send oh. me the pictures? We'll stick it on my Facebook and Twitter pages. Ooh, yes, I'll certainly I will. Will do that. I'll do that. You can but email me, ashraf at safm.coza. I'm, I'm so in love with him that I made up a nice little song. I won't be long. Madiba is the guy for me. Madiba, I love you so. Grasha <laughs> is very good, you see. So is Winnie and so is Pearl Edmund. But Madiba <laughs> is the guy for me. His speech is always Suits me to a T. Zuma and Becky, not good in anything. <laughs> he's the guy for me. You know what? Goodness gracious me. You should be the the, the leader when, when Parliament opens up and you can. 92 you can, 
so I think so. All right. Thanks so much for that call. Lovely call, Internet in Cape Town. Email me, please do. Ashraf at SAFM.com. So we want to get those pictures. Right. A couple of minutes to go. The... Um, you are doing some you're involved in some uh, design uh, entrepreneurship uh, thing in, in Botswana as well, right? Very yes, quickly, that's right, yeah? yes. Um, I will be going to Botswana next week, and part of that as well is to part with the knowledge in assisting our neighboring African countries, especially this time it will be Botswana. I will then be on the forums that are going to be taking place there. And I'm one of the speakers um, it, it, within the entrepreneurship and how these designers can start uh, picking up the, the scroll from me. And um, that's a big, it's a big occasion that is taking place there. Um, also, one of the things that I'll be doing, I'll be judging as well their collection. And they will also be coming into South Africa to exhibit on one of my shows that I'll be doing. So mentoring them as well to see how they can take their design into the highest level. Okay. We will be having the Vukani. So lots, well. lots you're doing yeah. there. We've got about a minute or so to go. Quick ones. Somebody said, see us saying, since he designs for Madiba, is he an ANC member? Quick question. Answer. I am a fully member of the ANC. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from that, I don't put my political alliances to the business part of it. Okay. But I am a member of the ANC. Right. Quick one. When, when did you first start this? I, mean, I think you said you were playing with fabrics when you were a, you were still a, a, a light here, picking in, right? Something yeah. like and, and what did your mother say? Well, my mom actually used to ask me that, how can I... Um, no, no, my mom was very okay with that mm -hmm. because my mom usually teaches us all the ho I mean, home shows to do, but only people that actually were sort of very sensitive to that were my brother's because they thought that I was going to be a CC mm, in mm, a country mm. in that time, there were those things that were <laughs> called a CC. So my brothers were not at all impressed by the way that I could start playing by fabric and start okay. knitting and all those things. 30 seconds to go. What, what do they say about you now? Wow, actually I've fed them now, even their kids. Now they and become a hero <laughs> in their family. <laughs> I'm feeding them with their there, kids. There we well. are. Someone said, you still remember one of the shirts in orange with black curls and some white, some white clouds, almost like a tiger. Uh, yeah, from MS Nalo, I think it is. Yeah. You remember that one? My okay, if you can't, there's not much time. Right. <laughs> La last question in, in 10 seconds. Just describe what you're wearing today. Oh, my goodness me. I'm wearing a pesh jacket, which is a one of my pieces, uh, funny enough, that I've created where I use a little bit of quite a number of pieces together. Of cuts, and, okay. Of cuts, yes. And then also a very nice, beautiful <laughs> shirt. All right. That we'll take like a picture have. of that. We'll take a picture and stick it onto Twitter and Facebook just now. So, Nobile Indamazi, thanks so much for allowing us to put you in the spotlight. It's been great chatting to you. It's been a great as well. Indeed. That's it. Time now for Radio Void. That's it. Time now for Radio Void. That's it. Time now for Radio Void.